Unleash your inner geek when Baraha Z and Inebriar join forces for ZCon. Join us for a mind-blowing celebration of all things pop culture. Immerse yourself in a world of comics, gaming, cosplay, and more. Get ready for thrilling panels and unforgettable encounters with local artists and creators. Whether you're a superhero aficionado, a gaming guru, or just looking for an epic day of craft beer, come on out to ZCon. It has something for everyone. Grab your tickets, secure a spot at this extraordinary event happening on September 30th at Barrel House Z in Weymouth. Geek out with us at ZCon. You can get your tickets by going over to inebriart.com. That's I-N-E-B-R-I hyphen A-R-T dot com. Check out our calendar events, and in September, just look up ZCon. See you there. Get ready for chills and thrills at Hometown Haunts and Hops Horror Convention here in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Join us for a spine-tingling day of horror-filled fun on October 28th at the Mayflower Brewing Company. Meet horror actor Matthew G. Taylor from Resident Evil and dive into a macabre world of cinema and literature. Sip on chilling brews, indulge in ghastly treats, and immerse yourself in a haunted atmosphere. Whether you're a horror buff or just seeking an unforgettable experience, Hometown Haunts and Hops has it all. Don't miss out on the eerie excitement. Secure your tickets now by heading on over to inebriart.com. Go to our events calendar, and in October you will find the link for Hometown Haunts and Hops, which is sponsored by HalloweenNewEngland.com. HalloweenNewEngland.com is the website for the truly Halloween-obsessed with the most extensive guides to New England haunted houses, ghost tours, classic horror film screenings, jack or lantern festivals, haunted hayrides, and more. They've got all the thrills covered throughout September and October with over 2,500 Halloween events on their events calendar and hundreds of local Halloween attractions. It's the only place you'll find everything from haunted history tours and costume contests to which haunts are open on Thursday nights. HalloweenNewEngland.com has your Halloween covered and is sponsoring Hometown Haunts and Hops this year. Welcome back, Inebriite. Uh, We are joined today by Elliot Fullman, uh, who I am going to do a live apology here um, because I totally got my wires crossed and I thought I was interviewing an intern. <laughs> and um, so, Elliot, I'm so sorry. Um, so if I seem completely unprepared, it's because I am. Um, but uh, I think... You're a young dude. I, you might be one of the youngest musicians we've had on the show. How how long have you been doing this professionally? If technically professionally, so if you're talking like actually full on seriously working on music and stuff, it's been like a year. Um, I was 17 when I was recording my first album, released it at 18 years old, all from the studio. Uh, not a studio, at home studio. Mm -hmm. uh, where I've just my interface and my laptop and uh, a shitty mic and my guitar. And that was it. And then that did really, really well. So now I'm on my second album. My second album's going to be coming out September 1st. But uh, um, I've been practicing guitar and stuff for years since sixth grade. I'm 18 now. Yeah. So since grade, I was like 12 or whatever. But nothing like professionally, just me like strumming chords on my guitar sure. and like covers of Metallica songs. Um. I mean, you mentioned a, a home studio. I mean, that seems to be like the way a lot of people are doing it now. You know, the, the yeah. technology's advanced so much um, that, you know, everyone can have quality equipment yes. at home. I'm going to ask an old person question. Do you feel like you have an advantage because you're a customer? I'm so, I don't need, like, I'm not completely incapable of doing any technology but like with tiktok we, we, you know we're trying to promote our stuff on tiktok i had to hire my youngest and be like hey man like i can't 
have, spend the time to learn this you know do you feel like being younger and having that kind of level of technology available your whole life is an advantage i think it's definitely an advantage because um i mean i can record music at any time i can just go on my phone even if i wanted to use garage band or whatever that works too there's mm-hmm. a lot of artists that did use garage band like alex g is known for using garage band or whatever i think i saw him say in one of his interviews or something um so i mean if you can just get an interface and you have some sort of device to record it with it's like perfect so i think definitely the, the new technology today is a lot easier because you know think about it Think about how many awesome, incredible bands and artists that we probably miss out on because they just didn't have access to recording. And yeah. then, or they didn't know how to do it, like, let's say, in the 90s or the 80s or whatever. I mean, that's so... I was talking with um, this uh, gentleman who um, I became fast friends with last night. Uh, his name's Ron. He runs concessions at a local music venue. Um, and so, like, obviously, we're talking music. And I say all the time that like, I don't understand where younger people find new music. Cause there's amazing stuff out there. And when I get to interview people like you, I'm, I will have to go back and deep dive your music. Cause you're not my intern. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know, that's how I'm discovering music is like interviewing people. And, you know, I'll frequently be like, well, what are you listening to? And I'll make some notes and go listen to, you know, whatever they're checking out. But, you know, when I was a kid, it's like the radio and MTV. And that's like where all music was kind of like in one spot for you to find, you know, where you're trying to get your music out to people. Like, what do you think is the best way to get it out there? You know, is is it just Spotify? Is it reaction videos on, you know, TikTok or like? Honestly, the the best way to get your music on like anywhere so you can see it, uh, of course, getting it on spotify or whatever is, is is incredible it's number one but once it's up on spotify it needs to be promoted so people can hear it yeah um unless you get very very lucky somehow with that spotify algorithm or whatever but i think tiktok instagram whatever having a social media presence uh even beforehand before you release your your music or whatever build up a community of like-minded people that love a similar type of music so uh for uh, years I have been doing. I did interviews. I did uh, with with bands and celebrities, and then uh, after that, I was doing TikToks, talking about records. My most recent record find, and I started to get more and more into indie music, and so did kind of TikTok at the time. So I got lucky with that. Um, so when I would pull up the Alex G record or the Elliot Smith record I got or Magic Star record I have, or whatever, um, people were like, "Oh my God, I love that album too." And they would follow me because of that. And then eventually down the line, when I released my album, I just did a TikTok post saying, hey, so I, if you're a fan of this artist, this artist, this artist, um, you might like my music. If Check it out if you, if you want to, blah, blah, blah. And people did because they knew my music taste and you know, the stuff I wanted, the, the stuff I, you know, I loved. Mm-hmm. Um, then they liked it too. That's really, I mean, that's really smart. I mean, because at that point, you know, they're following you. They're a fan of you. And that's kind of like how I've always thought of this podcast is like, mm-hmm. I don't know you. I'm getting to know you. So hopefully our listener is. And hopefully at the end, they're like, oh, he seemed like a cool guy. Let's go check out his music or his book or whatever. Because I yeah. feel like if you have that personal connection with someone, you're more apt to be like, oh, I'll check out what you're doing, man. You know? Yeah. You, know, you, you feel it, more supportive it's... of a friend than total stranger exactly and it's like like i said like you were saying it's building a connection and building a community with of people um that you connect to and it's beneficial for both because i love talking about music i love making music and if people want to stay for the ride of watching me talk about music and and listen to my music that's awesome yeah um so part of that discussion that I was talking with that guy last night was how genres of music really don't exist anymore. You know, Mm -hmm. it's it, it, every, everything is kind of an amalgam of, of all sorts of things. So I don't want to ask you what kind of music you play. I'm going to ask you 
what well-known performer would you tour with that would make sense? You know, like, so someone that our listeners might know that you would like say open up for, they'd be like, Oh, that, that makes sense for me to open up for whoever. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to say one dream artist I would love to open up for one day, which probably most likely never happened because they're just insanely big as Radiohead. Oh yeah, I mean for that, sure. that's a dream or whatever. Um, I think Alex G would make sense down the line. Sign Crushes Motorist, who's an awesome young slowcore artist. So I'm also friends with. We talked on Instagram and stuff. Is really really nice. Um, I think that makes sense, and something may happen against maybe someday down the line. Um, I would say like that. Duster is mm-hmm. another one, another dream of mine. Duster Alex G would be would be awesome. Um, Faye Webster. Uh, another dream would be Phoebe Bridgers. <laughs> so like artists like that. So like a acoustic indie slow core that type of vibe. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, you know, it's, and it's funny. It's like you, you never really like you say. I would probably never have it. You just really don't know. Um, a friend of mine who's a, a lead singer of a band, um, The Elevators. They're kind of I always call them like white guy reggae, um, but they're they're local to here, but they're they're like doing really really well. And I was I think I was interviewing him. I can't remember if I was interviewing him or just talking with him. And he said, "Oh, he's like, oh, like you know, one of the things that I always wanted was to meet the lead singer. I want to say of Stick Figure." And um, he's like. He's like, cause I figured that was achievable. Like meeting him was achievable. And he's like, I have a cell number now. He's like, you know, like we tour and collaborate together now. And it, it, it's, it's, you should just never, you know, it, it's amazing how like one, if you're really working at it, opportunities just kind of like pop up and it's, it's so yeah. cool. So yeah, Tom York, if you're watching this. Uh, <laughs> well, first of all, thanks for listening, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Good stuff. Yeah. So your second album is coming out. You're 18. Uh, my kids are 19 and 21. They have zero albums between them. Like what, like how as a, as a young person, like where do you find that kind of devotion and motivation? Cause that's kind of like, I'm not, I was a slacker as a kid. Kids are supposed to be slackers. Like, you know, that's, that's part of growing up. Um, well, uh, first but like, thing where, where first, does it come from? You know, like that's that amazes me. Where does it come from? Well, first things first, uh, it's never too late to make music. You can be 50 and, and still make awesome music or whatever. Um, I don't like so, how you said that, like, that's really old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say like it's really old. I, mean, I just said a random number that wasn't yeah. like 15. Um, well, you can be 19 and start making music. And, uh, but that motivation just simply comes from the love and passion of, of art and, and loving, loving music and loving and appreciating records and always listening to music, always listening to my favorite artists on Spotify all the time, uh, spinning the record that I just recently got on the record table. It comes from that. Uh, and I think that's where it should always come from. If you're, doing it for any 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 other reason other than just doing it for yourself for uh, for the you know it's your passion mm-hmm. if you're doing it for money or whatever then it's not for you it's not for you cuz then you're going to be thinking how can i make money off of this you know cuz it's it's not about money you got to be thinking oh man i just want to make good music i just want to make good music that's it right good songs maybe make a song that kind of sounds like this artist but also with this artist um, so that that's honestly where all that motivation comes from. But also, um, if uh, you're f- you know feeling down, if you're feeling upset, frustrated, anything, what I do is I turn that into uh, motivation. So like if I'm angry at something or whatever or sad about something, um, I'm like, okay, I'll just go write a song. I'll just make a song right now, or just simply strum chords or whatever. Um, so that's that's been my main my main thing but also on top of everything i've been doing interviews since i was eight or nine or 12 really really young age 
yeah, like nine, nine, eight or nine years old. You were interviewing so, other people? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For, for what? Just for social media or? Just, just for YouTube, social media, because I, I loved, I loved, I wanted to do YouTube and stuff. Uh, so I interviewed bands like James Hetfield from Metallica, Gaten from Stranger Things, Ice T. So it started from that. So consistently doing videos and meeting people, making questions and talking to people definitely was a big motivator. And also the very final thing is having a good support system. Uh, my mom and dad are very, very wonderful uh people and my mom's an artist she paints mm-hmm. um she would sell her art on at horror conventions and stuff so i'd always see her doing painting and always working hard so that was always a motivator but also my dad is pushes me to do all this stuff so he's like you like music whatever make music whatever. <laughs> like stuff like that and he would help me uh, figure out maybe a problem i was having on uh logic pro uh which is the uh software to record music that I use so, uh, and he would drive me to my auditions for when I would do acting. He would film my YouTube videos, edit my YouTube videos when I was nine years old because I didn't know how to edit a yeah. video. Uh, I do know now, but um, I, so I owe a lot of credit to my parents, uh, and I also owe a lot of credit to just simply music and art. That, that's how on earth did you get to interview James Hetfield at nine? Like. <laughs> That that's amazing. Oh, that one was at twelve. That one took oh, a couple of years to build up the resume. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we've just been reaching out uh, to a lot of metal bands and stuff. It's, especially at that age, I was a full on metal head uh, and like like full full on. So it started with a band. Uh, one of my first interviews was Dillinger Escape Plan, which is uh, because we were friends with the 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 guitarist Ben Weinman. Yeah. Um, uh, so that kind of started my youtube interviews and then uh it more and more interviews and build up the resume made it easier and easier but it took months and months to get a hold of metallica that's i mean interview. i've been doing this and like seven like, years and i i can't even get like a response <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> yeah yeah I, it was it was definitely yeah. definitely an experience um it was that like your favorite interview or is there another one James like, my favorite yeah. favorite interview yeah oh, that's without cool. a doubt uh he was really nice really cool dude yeah um so the new album you said is due out on was it september 1st yes uh w- like where did you find inspiration for this like where where do you kind of start your songwriting process my songwriting process actually it's very interesting that you say that because i do not have a songwriting process. Okay. What I do, because uh, I want to keep every song different, whatever, uh, and I feel like music is written the best when you're not trying too hard, mm-hmm. right? If oh, I'm going to start with this, 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 and this. If you have a formula for everything, it's going to be like a, I don't know, fast food processing or whatever, you know? Sure, yeah. Um, so uh, what I did, what I do is I just like, okay, I'll I'll take out my guitar. It could start any song. Could start with either uh, a guitar uh, thing I have going on, mm-hmm. it could be a, a vocal melody that I had in my head. I've started first a couple of times. Um, a drum machine. My most popular song. Uh, I'm so happy. That song started with a drum machine. I was like, oh, this sounds cool, or whatever. And then I started playing guitar right after that. Got the down or whatever and then i recorded vocals right after that and then it was just man there yeah i had a song <laughs> um uh so that it's kind of just like a open open process whatever yeah. sometimes i would have a song title in i in, in mind first mm-hmm. before any for any song or whatever i'm like that's a really cool set of words so let's kind of build around that you know like what does that uh, what is cause the new album's called End of Ways? I was like, what would End of Ways sound like? So I would start playing guitar and I was like, oh, that kind of sounds like End of Ways. And yeah. then I would start doing the vocal melodies and stuff. So my song process is no process. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's kind of like the, what was it? Um, Monty Python back in the day always said that they didn't have a style and their lack of style and form became like the Monty Python style. 
you know? exactly because there's no nothing more uh valuable and unique in this whole planet than an individual person because like uh i don't know what type of music you can make you can it'd be very different from mine sure. but it's your music no one mm -hmm. else can make your music because it's you yeah um so as someone who is first album was out of 17 and now you're 18 with a second album is it hard to play gigs like is there like a issue with not being 21 honestly that has not been a, hasn't been a problem it, it hasn't luckily um and i actually love playing shows and i want to play more shows all the time constantly because uh i just simply love it and i love meeting fans and stuff um but I might be doing another show at a record store called Vinyl Addiction that's in New Jersey at some point soon. So we're going to be setting that up. Um, and I might, we're, I'm also in the process of setting up another show uh, in Atlanta uh, for a record store called Vertigo Vinyl that I love. Because um, I love their social media presence and what they do. And they have a great selection of vinyl and I want to go there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Make your shopping trip a, a uh, tax deduction. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, I there hasn't been any problems playing live. No, I, yeah. I love I love it. I love playing. <laughs> Do you pretty much just play like that kind of record store venue or? Yes, um, I did play one show. I've only done a couple of shows so far. Um, yeah. uh, I played most of my shows have been at record store. I did one in East Side Bags. In Montclair, New Jersey, uh, which was a uh, comic book store, which a lot of people showed up and it was awesome. I did one in Limited to One Records in New York. Uh, and my favorite show definitely was Mercury Lounge in New York, which was at an actual venue. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people showed up. There was, and it was on a Wednesday night. And there was tons of, of awesome people and it, it went well. It, I, I played well and I loved it. But I just recently uh, got in contact with a booking agent, so I might be able to do more more of the actual venue shows as well. But I will never go away from also playing at a record store here and there, you know. Yeah. Now, so are you based out of New Jersey, or is that? Yes, I'm based out oh, okay. of New Jersey. Yeah, you asked me where I was, but I didn't ask you, which <laughs> I was just so feeling stupid at the moment. Um, what the hell? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is there like a great music scene there? Or like, because I find music scenes to be very weird. Um, how, you know, all the large cities have one, you know, Boston, of mm -hmm. course, and New York. Um, but living here in Southern Mass, like almost right before Cape Cod, there's like a really solid music scene, like right where, where I'm based in Plymouth. Like we have you know touring larger groups to come through we're, we're lucky where we have like a, a hall venue and then like a small performing arts center and then a bunch of bars and it's easy for a musician i shouldn't say it's easy nothing's easy musicians are able to to have uh, a career playing music and just in this area just from playing bars and restaurants and stuff it, it, it you i mean no offense you're you're new to the scene and um, yeah, okay. but uh is it that kind of thing there where there's a lot of live music being performed um honestly i'm gonna be so real i'm not i'm not in touch enough with the music scene in my area of new jersey as i should be um but there is a lot of venues and stuff in, in uh smaller venue venues bigger venues in this area but I, I'm actually more in touch with like the scene in Philly and New York, like you're saying, like in the yeah. cities and stuff. Um, so honestly, I, but one thing and one thing I've been noticing, there's a lot of music fans in New Jersey. Uh, I mean, like everywhere, but I mean, yeah. like there's a lot of fans of my type of music, the slow core acoustic indie in New Jersey. Um, and I've seen a lot of people saying that they're going to start making bands and they want to uh, make an album or whatever. So I think it's on the come up. I think New Jersey is definitely on the come up uh, with all that stuff. Yeah, for, for sure. For yeah, sure. I, I love the idea of, of like a record store concert. I never really even thought about it because the, the thing I find here is people are always 
like there's really great local bands with original music and they'll have a so, so turnout. And then there'll be a Tom Petty tribute band that will sell out the biggest venue in the area. And you're like, I don't understand that at (laughs) all. Like I like Tom Petty and someone who can play a a good Tom Petty. That's great. But to me, that's kind of like, I don't know. Like, I don't, that's fine. I guess it's just not my thing. I'd rather see someone do their music. Like you said, only one person can write Elliot Fullman music. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, you know, anybody can do an Elliot Fullman tribute band. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that, that that in that case, it's I think it's like the this, this stuff with like promotion. Right. So like uh, there's uh, I mean, there's a lot of also teenagers that know how to do TikTok, know how to do Instagram. But there's also a lot of teenagers that don't know where to start. Right. Yeah. Um, or they, they just spent most of their time scrolling and liking TikToks. Right. And, and um, uh, so that's how they, they're familiar with TikTok. So they have a sense of what it is that they need to post. But also the biggest thing is consistency mm-hmm. without a doubt. You can have uh, if you post like once every two to three days at the very minimum um, or you can like and you're consistent with it for like a year. Right. Or two years. Imagine three years. You That's how Google can very much so build a following um and that's not even a lot compared to what people will say They're like you should post two to three times a day or whatever but yeah, i that's mean crazy. that's yeah. that's that's not me there's a lot of people that do that and it works because i see all their posts on my on my feed mm-hmm. and then i like oh i know this guy i like their stuff let's see what take they have on this music thing uh here like there's um uh a tiktoker named chef gold who has incredible music taste um, and I love his videos so much and he posts like a lot, he posts a lot. Um, and he's, he's a cool person and you can tell he's got a cool vibe, but you get that sense of somebody by seeing them and seeing their posts. Um, no one's going to, uh, people will like your band. You might find people that like your band wherever, if you post like once every like three weeks, yeah. but you're more likely to find, you know, build a community if you're, in front of people consistently because playing shows is incredible it's a great way to promote it's a great way to do that stuff but you gotta think if you have a tiktok that gets i don't know randomly blows up and gets twenty thousand views or thirty thousand views or whatever Mm -hmm. uh that's to me that's big really big promotion compared to a show that's of like 50 people to 100 people yeah. Right. Or even if if you had a show with five hundred people, right? It's still eyes. It's still eyes. You know those five hundred people are your biggest fans because they're there to see you live. Right. But also if you're trying to make more fans, um, posting, getting views, like thirty thousand, getting from thirty thousand eyes mm-hmm. for your music is big. It's very important. Yeah, you know, and I love that you said consistency is the most important thing because it, it's it's so true. Um, a good friend of mine uh, had a video go viral a couple couple years ago. I think it's a couple years ago, and he did like a like a, a hardcore might be overstating it uh, version of Santa Claus is coming to town, singing <laughs> with his daughter. And of course, that that kind of shit blows up all the time. But that was it. Like, he didn't follow it up with anything. So it's kind of like you lose that momentum. And I see so many bands now that, you know, they release their album, but they like leading into the release of the album, they'll like every month they'll release a song and kind of like build the momentum into it. I mean, is that the way that you I mean, are you releasing singles from uh, End of Ways? Yes, I released one time. Yeah, I released one song, and that's what we're going to be doing, and I'm going to have a music video coming out on uh, the 28th of some sort, hopefully. That's uh, in question right now, because I don't know if we'll have enough time we're going to film it this weekend, but um, it, it'll probably happen. But uh, there's uh, there's this thing, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, uh, singles. I released yeah. a song, the title track of End of Ways, um, uh, a a couple, I think a week or two ago. Um, and uh, it's, it definitely built momentum, 
without a doubt, I also released another single that was off of End of Waves, like the whole album. Yeah. Uh, just like it was a B-side that I've released that first called You Are Worthless. So that kind of definitely got got people getting more people hyped and stuff mm-hmm. uh, for the for then for the album release. And nothing will be more hyped and like build more hype than the actual album coming out. Of course, out. yeah, yeah. Um, but but it's like a movie trailer, you know. It's like yeah. they put yeah, out exactly. a teaser trailer and then they put out a, a regular trailer and then an extended trailer and then mm-hmm. you know it's like you have to keep people like constantly engaged. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's important. Um, it's a job unto it, itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. And that's why there's a lot of bands that, that you were talking about that will play a show and they don't have as many people. They, they make incredible music because it's two jobs. Social yeah. media, promoting, and then also band. And if you're just a full-on indie band, it's like 80, 80 billion jobs because you're like, okay, um, uh, how do I book these shows? Now, how do, how do I... I plan the tour? Who's booking the hotels? Yeah. yeah. yeah uh-huh. I mean, it's how do I release final? How do I release a CD? Mm-hmm. How do I make uh, a shirt? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like all these simple little things, like um, it all adds up to a lot, a lot of hard work. Yeah. So if you're making music, that motivation does come in handy without a doubt. Especially when you're like not at the point where you can comfortably or make a comfortable living off of your music. So it's like, you're doing mm-hmm. all that and holding a real job, not real job. I hate that term. <laughs> holding another job that pays your bills. Um, yeah. It, and it is, it's, it's exhausting. And like an art in itself is like kind of that point where we're, we're trying to grow and we can't like necessarily bring on a ton of new people to do stuff. And so we're like trying to balance it all. And you, you want to do so much. And it's, it, it's, it is a slow, that's why I hate when people think of like overnight, ex- overnight successes, you know? Yeah. Cause it's like e- even hopefully end of ways blows up huge and you open up for Radiohead. <laughs> But you've been playing I guitar. Think <laughs> I think even if, I think if even End of Ways did blow up and went crazy, yeah, it, I don't think I'd be able to open up for Radiohead. Yeah, but I mean, okay. like people would look at that and be like, "Oh, this kid's an overnight success," and be like, "Well, he's been playing guitar mm-hmm. since." You know, like they don't look at all the work you put in that yeah. leads up to that success. Yeah, the funniest part is like we're talking about like overnight success, but that's kind of what happened with uh, my first album, "What's Wrong." Oh, really? With TikTok. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was uh, playing video games. The album was released. It was already released for like three days. It had like a couple thousand s- streams. I was like, wow, this is awesome. This is what I dreamed of. Like, wow, this is incredible. Yeah. And I was just playing video games with my friends or whatever. I'm like, let me check the stats. It was like really late at night. And I looked and I saw a hundred people listening right now. Like, what? A hundred people right now? It's been like 20 to 30 consistently. Yeah. Uh, what's going on? And as I was looking at it, it kept pumping up 150, 200, 300, and then went all the way up to like a thousand people listening at, at all at one point. It's like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. What is going on? I go on TikTok and a kid duetted one of my videos. Yeah. Right. Of, of me promoting my album. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just like. And that post was going crazy. It had three hundred thousand likes. Oh, so so that kind of is what kind of kickstarted what's wrong in my music and stuff. Yeah, just just a, a kid randomly liking my music, felt connected to it, and made a post like this. It, it's so right. funny. Uh, like the, we had one of our podcasts do a very similar thing. Uh, we <laughs> recorded with this actress, and like a year later. I happened to look at the stats and I was like, what the hell? Like, why does she have 2000 downloads in the past, like two weeks? <laughs> and so now I'm texting my producer. I'm like, was she cast in a Marvel movie? Did she get arrested? Like what's going on within that's that started in like November by January. That episode had like 24,000 views. Oh, nice. And I'm nice. like, what happened? <laughs> but like, she happened to be, and she mentions it in the episode um are you familiar you ever hear the movie um uh human centipede yes 
So the director made like another movie and it's oh, all, yeah. like, it's wow. Like you're like, let's watch the human centipede instead. Um, and she happens to be in it. And like, he launched this whole campaign about how he's being, you know, blackballed or whatever. So like that all hit and just like her name was attached to it. And so it just like caused this huge, like massive download. But the cool part of it is then it, filters into the rest of your content you know because mm. we saw all of our episodes see a spike in, in downloads because of it so it's it's i think it's one of the funnest things to happen in this kind of field where you're just like this is crazy like yeah. where's it gonna stop you know <laughs> yeah yeah it, it is really cool it is it is a it's, internet and social media is a crazy crazy place and it changes lives yeah it, it, without a doubt changes lives and, and, and it's it's beautiful because I'm able to make music because of it. You know, it's awesome. We're able to do this podcast because of it. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's just wonderful. <laughs> do so you've mentioned vinyl several times mm-hmm. and I am very much a collector by nature. Mm-hmm. Um, and vinyl is one of those things where like, I'm, I'm so busy now and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure you're a busy person where like, I'm trying to segment my seg segment my life where I'm like, all right, I need to have my downtime, the actual downtime. And one of the things that I, I'm really like, that would be really appealing is to like sit and listen to music, which I feel like is a vinyl yeah. thing and not just have it on the background, but like, enjoy it. Like, look, look at the album art and the liner notes and, um, but at, at, at the same point, I'm like, it could become a problem. <laughs> <laughs> are, yeah, are you, it, do you have a huge re- vinyl collection, or? I do, yeah, yeah I, and it's it's uh, it's gotten to the point where I've run out of space for my vinyl. Yeah. To get more, I'm like, okay, I can't, I can't, I need to step back a little bit. Um, but yeah, I I'm definitely a collector of vinyl. Most of my t- and it's also I, it's. I use it the excuse I can do a video with the records. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'll do, I'll do a TikTok talking about the most recent records I got uh, at Newberry Comic Record Store. Now, see uh, now now see now you got my brain working because now I'm like oh I could buy albums and like <laughs> review them on TikTok. This kid's a genius. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's yeah, that's what that's what we that's what I I do. I, and uh, he's like oh my god I love that record oh that record's so rare to find. Yeah. And stuff like that and i feel so accomplished if it's like a really good like rare record i find it uh because i get the show i get to show it off to my you know my tiktok community where i'm like oh i have have a nice life death consciousness on vinyl and that's like a really hard record to get yeah um i love that record and it's changed so many people's lives including mine uh so just to have that on vinyl and to show that to people it's it was definitely uh it was, it was fun it's exciting yeah. I, I I love how you said it, it. The record changed your life, and I think that is like I'm a fan of all types of art. You know, like we hosted a stand up comedy show last night, and to me, that's art. Yeah, it is art. I don't know, and I'm sure it happens to people, but I don't know if I've ever had a comic that I've seen been like, "Oh, that guy changed my life." But music definitely affects me in really hard to explain kind of ways you know um have you had that experience with a fan yet that has come up and said that like this is yeah i mean this song means a lot to me for whatever reason or i get beautiful wonderful dms all the time from people saying that my music changed their life i but there was one that was like the best dm i've ever gotten when somebody somebody told me that uh my music was one of the very first things that they connected with with their girlfriend, their current girlfriend now. So like they they got into my music. And that's one of the conversations that pops up, and now they're you know a thing together. They're in a relationship. Oh my god! I never even thought about that. Like I, I, your like song, one, your your song could be <laughs> their song. Like that's weird. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Uh, that that was probably one of the best best messages I've ever gotten. But every message, I I I, I get. Messages from people saying that my music came out at the perfect time because they're going through a lot of struggle, struggle and a lot of hardships, uh, and my music helped them, helped them get through it. Stuff like that is just, it means so much, and it gives me a whole another reason, a whole another motivation to make music because it helps people. Yeah, it helps people. It really uh, does for sure. 
when I was thinking about the next albums, like I need to make this incredible. I need to make this much better than what's wrong because uh, it's not just for me anymore. It's also for other people yeah. too. Because I was, you know, like I was saying originally. So did music, you feel more pressure because of that? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no because uh, I, I just I feel like I've I've been getting better and better as a songwriter, even just as like behind like not releasing music, just writing music. Uh, practicing and stuff, I felt like I've gotten better and better. Um, so I was like, I, I should, I think I could do this. I think I could make a better album than my first one to help, help people. It's helping, helping people. Yeah. Um, so that's, it's just a, I think I did. I think I succeeded and I think that they're going to love it. I think they're going to love the album too. Nice. Um, so you being a younger person, me being the old tired, Part that say. I am. <laughs> well, he's the same age as my kids, so they tell me all the time. Um, but uh, are you, do you, because you see a lot of people like yourself that are younger that kind of get exposed to fame and they disintegrate. Are you worried about that? Are you cognizant? Do you kind of have like a plan in place, for lack of a better word? Honestly, I'm not I'm not worried about that at all because yeah. uh, what happens what happens to the people is that they originally start like for the love of music for the love of all this and then like if they blow up like crazy then they're starting to think money that's mm-hmm. what they're starting to think uh oh can I get onto this major record label you know like like stuff like like that and then they kind of just turn into that you know that type of cookie cutter. I'm not saying every, every artist that goes on major labels like, is like yeah. cookie cutter, but I'm saying like if the, the the type of person to get uh, enraptured and wanting more fame, more fame, more fame, more money, like uh, then they it, it lose the loses the soul of the music. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I mean, I I I I don't. I'm not gonna get like that. I, I won't. And if you think I do, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> you can slide into his DMs and like yell at him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I won't. I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I, I live in an apartment. I I record I record my music on an interface a lot. The most recent album I recorded uh, at a studio. Um, but uh, I think I actually might go back to recording at home again for the yeah. next for the. Um. One of the coolest, back. most down to earth musicians I got to talk to uh, was Evan Stanley. He's uh, the son of Paul Stanley of Kiss. Oh man, that's awesome! And like he's talking, and he's like blah blah blah. And I was working at the Gap at the time. Like you worked at the Gap, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, man, my dad's rich. I'm not. And I was just like, that's awesome. Like that is so cool. Because I I don't feel like most wealthy people would kind of instill that in their kids is like you're mm-hmm. yeah i'm wealthy you're not you still need to like find your way and learn a work ethic and i think that's awesome that is awesome and uh, i i think that's i mean honestly just just caring just caring about music caring about fans is just is it's number one it's number one over anything awesome man that that's i mean well said um so the album's due out on september 1st end of ways where can people go to get it i'm assuming all the downloadables but you know this is the promotion part of the show yeah all right promotion time Um, (laughs) so you can find my music at it's my it's just my name elliot fulham it's on spotify it's on itunes it's on every streaming service um uh there you go and if you're interested in getting updates wherever my instagram is my Instagram, TikTok, etc. is just my name, Elliot Fulham. And also I have another account uh, called Little Punk People um, where it's uh, other other clips and stuff, extra stuff. Um, and I will be posting consistently if you're interested in getting into ways on vinyl. It's uh, on Kill Rock Stars right now. Uh, killrockstars.com uh, or, or .net. I, don't, I forget what the dot is. But uh, Kill Rock Stars, you'll see it. Just search up Elliot Fulham on the search thing, whatever. There's two variants of the vinyl right now, and I'm gonna have an artist edition of the vinyl on my website soon. How little punk people top net. 
Nice. So people can go there to get their uh, vinyl to record, to, to review on their new TikTok that yeah. they're. Yes. So they can tell yeah. their youngest that my TikTok's not trash anymore. <laughs> and if you're seeing this, uh, if you post a video with the vinyl or if you're talking about the music, I will share it. I will comment. I will like it. Awesome. Outstanding, man. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Uh, for- I'm yeah. sorry for the mix up, but I would definitely oh. hire you as an intern. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i did it that's the that, that's the whole that was the whole uh that's the whole the whole thing behind this yeah i'm actually okay. secretly there <laughs> <laughs> but thanks again man this is great uh for our listeners you, you know where to find us we'll be back again next week and uh elliot again thank you so much thank you so much for having me Why? <laughs> <laughs> And thanks for checking out the show today, listeners. Uh, if you enjoyed the content today, you can go over to patreon.com slash inebriart to support the show. You can join over there for just a few dollars a month and help us provide this fun content that you just checked out. You can also email us at inebriart.com with your questions, complaints, and concerns. Or you can find us on all social medias at inebriart or at inebriart6 on Instagram. And also don't forget to check out our other shows, Bar Talk Podcast, Old Colony Cast, Inebriart, and all the other shows on the Inebriart Network, which you can find at inebriart.com. Thanks again for listening.